Zechariah chapter 12. The burden of the word of the Lord of Isaiah, I mean Israel. Saith the Lord, which stretches out the heavens, and layeth the foundation of the earth. Well, you got a problem with your NASA. They sent that, that telescope out there in outer space, and I seen the other day, oh, we found the Big Bang. <laughs> no, you didn't. Because everything is, is created by the Creator, and we are the creation. Hebrews 11, the great faith chapter, says you got to have faith in God. Now, one of some of these, you know, say this prayer, some people are saying, do they even believe in God? Do they believe in the Creator? And when we get to Zechariah chapter 12, very important things coming up. Well, one of the very important things it says is a burden. The Creator and the creation. And someone told me the other day that they wrote me, well, you know, didn't Donald Trump bring prayer back into school? Okay, did Donald Trump bring, bring creation and creator to the school? Or are they still teaching evolution? Can the parents fill out a form under Donald Trump and say, I want my children in the creation class. I want my children in evolution class. I want my child to have both. Because the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. That God is the creator. That's the foundation of chapter 12. The burden of the word of the Lord for Isaiah. I mean, sorry, sorry, Isaiah. Israel. Chapter 12. 12 is the number of Israel. The Jews are to believe in Genesis chapter 1. They don't name their days Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. They name their days first day of the week, second day of the week, third day of the week. The creation. The seventh day they rest. Why? Because the creator rested. Layeth the foundation of the earth and formeth the spirit of man within him. So we are made by God. We're not made by an accident. We're not made by chance. The Bible says in Genesis uh, chapter 1 or 2, that God breathed into man, and man became a living soul. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about. Now think about it. I got here a cup of coffee. I drink me a cup of coffee. Some people get a cup of tea. Some will get a cup of milk. And you enjoy whatever you put in your cup. Here's a cup of trembling. You drink it and you're going to tremble. You're going to fear. You're going to have anxiety. When they shall be in the, in the, in the siege, both against Jerusalem and uh, Judah and Jerusalem. Wait, I'm not going to read that. We're going to be looking at the nations coming up against Jerusalem. We're going to look at Armageddon. In that day. Now in that day is 115 times that expression in the Bible in 112 verses. Isaiah has the most at 43 verses, that expression, in that day. We're going to see over and over in Zechariah chapter 12. It points to a specific date, a specific period. Will I make Jerusalem, the city of the Jews, God's city, a burdensome stone for all people? going to be a big problem. It's going to be a big load. All that burden cells with it shall be cut in pieces. God told Abraham the blessing was passed on to Jacob. I will curse 
them that curse you. Any individual, any people, any nation, that includes Germany and the Nazis, that includes the KKK, this neo-Nazism, anybody who is against and hates the Jew, you are an enemy of God. And that includes to say you're all finished, God is all finished with the Jew. And some of those things are in the Baptist churches today. They don't even know it. You know, like I said over and over, people think that the Baptist well, flowers and good come into the house of the Lord. That's Old Testament. There are Christians today, oh, the earthquakes, oh, the problems, you know, the, the mark of the beast and everything like that. That ain't you. There are people who are burdened in the church age of Jewish doctrine that has nothing to do with us. We're out of here before that happens. And the Bible says we're to rightly divide the Word of God, Book of Hebrews, the Epistles to the Hebrews. How more clear can you get? James, written to the twelve tribes scattered aboard. Peter is the apostle to the, Je to, the, to the Jews. Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles, Jews, and church. You better rightly divide. Though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it, Jerusalem. There is coming a day that all will be against the city of God. In that day, again, saith the Lord of hosts, I will smite every horse with astonishment. The horse is going to be and you say, well, you know, you can't take it figure. Well, they didn't know what jeeps and tanks and, and you know, bazookas were back then. So, well, you can't hit a jeep or a tank with astonishment. And I think with technology and what I read in the book of Revelation and all the events that are going to happen, electricity is not going to be your friend. And his writer with madness. Right, maybe you can put the right, you know, he's the operator of the tank, whatever. Yeah. I will open my eyes upon the house of Judah. That's God speaking. I will smite every horse of the people with blindness. Now, that's one of the things that God does. When those two angels are in Sodom and the Sodomites come in, they want to break and tear the house down to have sex with those two men. The angels strike them with blindness. To get Paul's attention after he got saved on the road to Damascus, he gets up and he's blinded. So he walks and gets to Abigail, I think it was house. There were many, many people in, in Israel in the time of Jesus that were blind. And they were healed by Jesus. Blindness seems to be in the Bible a very attention getter. It also shows with, with Isaac and Jacob that it's something that comes with old age. Well, today we have glasses. We have contact lenses. We can go see an eye doctor. The governors of Judah shall say in their heart, The inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength in the Lord of hosts, their God. We're going to rally around God. Our strength is God. In that day, 
I make the governors of Judah like a hearth of fire among the wood. That, that hearth is, is, is the bottom stone, the foundation of a fireplace, of a heating environment where the fire sits. And you would put wood on top of that hearth and you would light it. Like a torch of fire in a sheep. And that sheep is when you gather the, the wheat together the, and, you, and you put it in your arms, you got this big cluster of grains. And you tie it together. Very flammable. And they shall devour all the people round about. Victory to the Jews. On the right hand, on the left. Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place. Even in Jerusalem. So the worldwide focus of God is a place called Jerusalem. A city of peace. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. So at this point, Judah and Israel are still separated. The glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify against Judah. You don't want no pride. We don't want, well, we're better than you, and we're better than you, and, you know, we had David, and, you know. In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and the Lord's going to defend, woe be to the offenders. Those who attack are not going to do very well when God is against you. He that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David, strong, mighty. David took on a lion and a bear. <coughs> David took Goliath on. David took his own family and done right. David took on King Saul and was proper. And the house of David shall be as God. Well, the house of David is the line of Jesus Christ. As the angel of the Lord before them, that's Jesus Christ. And it shall come to pass in that day, I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. And in that day, if America's there, she comes against Jerusalem. Goodbye. Adios. If the UK comes up at that time and attacks Jerusalem, bye-bye. Poland, China, Russia, whoever. All the nations that come against you. There are some nations that we read, they help the Jews. I will pour out upon the house of David Upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and of supplication. Supplication is asking God for something. It's, it's a prayer. They shall look upon whom they have pierced. There's Jesus. 
his hands, his feet, his brow, his side. So in this event of Zechariah chapter 12, the focus is here comes the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and he's been wounded. He's of the house of David, Matthew, Luke, and he's got holes in his hands and the holes in his feet and a hold in his side. Thrush in thy hand, Thomas. My Lord, my God, Mr. Jehovah Witness. They shall mourn for him the one day pierced. And this mourning is, what did we do? As one that mourneth for his only son. You mean for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son? Don't mess with the word. Now that son, that his and son is italic. Now the King James translators, when they put the word in italic, they did not have what would be proper for us to find a word. So what they did under prayer, what they did under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, is they put the word there. And they put it in italic to say, it's not in the text. When we translate it from the original tongue. Now if you were to get the word in Spanish for toothbrush, you would have to put the brush of the teeth. And I say that the italic words, because when you get the italic words and you go into modern Alexandrian cult Bibles of Westcott and Hort, of Cole Syndicatus and, and, and uh, Vaticanus, those italic words in the King James Bible are messed with. But the modern Bibles, when they change their Bibles, they don't put a, a cause and say, well, we change. They just put it in there like it was the original text. And they don't tell you. And shall be in bitterness for him, Jesus. Wait a minute, haven't you seen the last four chapters of Zechariah? Have we not seen Jesus in the first coming? I don't like the Old Testament. Yeah. Alright. When you take Scripture with Scripture, and you take the Gospel of John, and you take Zechariah, we come to the conclusion with other Scriptures. When we see Jesus, we're going to see a man that has been marked and scarred. We're not going to have those scars. I can imagine some dumb saved Baptist is going to get to heaven. They're going to say, well, what's those marks? Oh, man. As one... That is in bitterness for his firstborn. Look at the wording. For the Jewish person would be your firstborn son. Something tragic's happened to him. You are in agony. You are in defeat. That's how they're going to be with Jesus. In that day shall there be a great mourning in Jerusalem. No joy is sun. As the morning of Hadarimim in the valley of Megiddo. Armageddon. There it is. 
So already in history, a big event at Mageddon is going to port through again at Armageddon. And the land shall mourn. There's going to be a lot of dead bodies of beasts and humans. Death is going to be surrounded. Every family apart would might just think that somewhere in every family is going to be somebody. Like the American Revolution, how many people have been killed? And there were fathers and mothers that they had children, sons that were on both sides and killed. The Bible tells us in Exodus, if that house did not have the blood above the door from the throne of Pharaoh down to the bone underneath the bridge and the piglet and the lamb and the calf, all the firstborn died. And there was a great cry had not ever. Exodus is going to happen again. Don't mess with Exodus. Don't mess with any of the books of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation 66 books. It's going to happen again. The family of David apart. That's the kingly line. That's the line of Jesus. Their wives apart. The family of the house of Nathan apart. You say, well, who on earth is Nathan? And why do I care? Oh, that's the prophet Nathan that came to David. No. Gospel of Luke. Gospel of Luke. Chapter 3. Luke 3. Verse 29. Luke 3 is the genealogy of Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ. Mary's genealogy, Luke 3.29, which is the son of Jose, or Hosus, Jesus, which is the son of Eliezer, which is the son of Jerem, which is the son of Mattaph, which is the son of Levi. It's not the priest. Which is the son of Simeon. Which is the son of Judah. That's not the tribe. Which is the son of Joseph. Which is the son of Jonah. Which is the son of Elkiah. Which is the son of Melaniah. Which is the son of Menem. Which is the son of Mephath. Which is the son of Nathan. Which is the son of David. Which is the son of Jesse. Mary is of David. As Joseph was. But Mary splits off. Not Solomon. As the adopted father. Of Jesus. Joseph. Mary's line goes from. Jesse. David. Nathan. To Mary. That's the line of Mary. So go back. To. Zechariah, the house of David apart, their wives apart, the house of Nathan apart, their wives apart, the wives of the house of Levi, this is Mary's family, found in the Old Testament that people don't want to read. The house of Shimei, their wives. Now go back to Luke 3 again. Let's check it out. Verse 
Let's do scripture with scripture. We'll look at Luke 3.32 and this time we'll go backwards. We'll take from Luke 3.32 the son of Boaz. That's Boaz. Ruth. Which is the son of Obed. Which is the son of Jesse. I'm reading it backwards. Which is the son of David. Which is the son of Nathan. Which is the son of Matha. Which is the son of Menon. Which is the son of Mila. Which is the son of Elkina, which is the son of Jonah, which is the son of Joseph, which is the son of Judah, which is the son of Simeon, which is the son of Levi, which is the son of Matthew, which is the son of Joram, which is the son of Eliezer, which is the son of Jose. Joel. Back to Zechariah. Scripture with scripture. We'll pick it up the right way. Verse 12. 12, 12, the number of Israel. The land shall mourn every family apart, the family of David apart, and their wives apart, the family of Nathan apart, their wives apart, the family of the house of Levi, the, the family of Shimei apart. Did we not just read that? There, that's Mary's genealogy. And the families that remain, and every family apart and their wives apart, seem to be pointing at wives. And there was a woman named, there was a virgin named Mary who was piled to Joseph. Also, in the time of Jeremiah, that we've already studied, and you can go listen to it. There was a problem with the wives. The wives were making cakes to the Queen of Heaven. The children were starting the fires, and the husbands were bringing the wood. It would be to get to the fact is here is Jesus, here is the Messiah. Oh my God, what do we do wrong? What is all this idolatry nonsense? And if we're coming out of the tribulation period, out of the Antichrist, the, the golden image, the 666, the mark in the forehead, the mark of the hand. And here are these Jews, Celebes or whatever, a place prepared by God. We know that. Coming out of the tribulation period, here comes Jesus on horseback with the church. And they see this, 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 this Messiah marred and scarred. Then they're going to know exactly the life of Jesus. There's going to be great mourning. I, I don't know how many years it's going to be from Acts chapter 1 when Jesus ascended into heaven. And all the places in the book of Acts where the Jews harassed the body of Christ. Until the day that Jesus comes back. All those years that Jews like. If we only done right. If only our fathers were to believe who he was. Then the nation of Israel is forgiven. They're given a new heart and they're given the Spirit of God. Their sins will be blotted out. They will not be remembered no more. And then we pick up the Jewish life when Joshua crosses the Red Sea. I mean the Red Sea. When Joshua crosses the Jordan River. But Many Bibles, including the King James Bibles, are wrong because in Acts chapter 7, they say Joshua. Acts chapter 7, the King James Bible, it says Jesus. That's the beginning of the new Jews. 
and a covenant that will never, never be broken. You're not going to find, after Jesus brings them in the promise, you're not going to find a book called Judges saying, and they did that which they were really pleased. You ain't going to see that. You're not going to see a man named Elkiah take his wife Naomi and we're going to go run to Moab. You're not going to see that. You're never going to see Israel crying out, well, we want a king like this. Oh, no, 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 no. No, you're not. And you're never going to see David say, oh, you know what, I should be in a battlefield. Let me take a little walk. You're never going to see that. And you take the rest of the body, you're never going to see. It. 